Hi everyone. So thank you for the support to make this channel to grow for the past three months. Thank you so much. So I hope we have learned and digest the definition and the term of pathology for cancer in the previous videos. So this week we are going to discuss the formation of cancer. Seems like out of nowhere. So this is actually the origin story of Anakin to become the Darth Vader. This is the carcinogenesis. Before we start to talk further in depth about carcinogenesis, I think it's better that we know what is a cell cycle. The cell cycle describes the, the life of the single individual cell. It doesn't matter where the cell resides in the human body. Mm. So the cell cycle <laughs> is divided into interface and the M phase. As what you have guessed it, M comes from the word mitosis. Mitosis, there are four phases there, so I'm not going to dwell into that because it's not too relevant. All right. So the interface, we have a G not phase. G not phase, or we call it a coincidence. This is where the cell remain dormant. Mm, let me take an example like the skin. The G not the G not period is very short maybe in a matter of hours but in uh, neuron cells it then goes to years right so this cell will remain dormant and most probably have already been differentiated right g naught is the decision phase in which the cells will have to decide where it's going to remain dormant or it's going to the synthesis phase and g1 Right. So in G1 phase, you go to synthesis. So that's the cell synthesis. Yeah, it's the chromosomes, is the protein that further prepare for the mitosis phase. That is the synthesis phase. Then, and you go to G2. Once it's G2, it will go to the point of no return, where it will have to go to the mitosis phase, and one cell will become two cells. As you see, the most important phase of all is actually the S phase, the synthesis phase. The synthesis phase is where the DNA replicate. See, from 23 pairs, you become the 46 pairs. This is where the replication occurs and it would have what we call a DNA adults. DNA adults is nothing but the DNA damage. You see, we have 23 sets of chromosomes, right? When the cell is uh, replicating, it's not like one or two times. It might be hundreds to thousands of times. So the DNA might be misinterpreted. This is where the mutations comes in. It occurs at the synthesis phase. And the cell is actually quite smart. And they have a return mechanism. But we need to know if the DNA damage is not being regulated, the repair is not done, it will go into M phase and you become defective. So this is where the cancer occurs. The cancer occurs when there is a unsustainable proliferative signaling that causes continuing and excessive rounds of cell division. Everything occurs when there is a DNA adult and then the repair mechanism fails and the DNA damage and that causes 
the cell to divide and divide and divide like a never ending story. So this is the case of the cancer. This is a very simple way to describe a carcinogenesis. Mind you, a caveat here, carcinogenesis is actually a multi-step and multi-stage process in the cell. And we not really know how does carcinogenesis really really come about. But with these are all the small little little pieces of the puzzle that we try to get a conclusion why we have cancer. To further fathom about this uh, multi-step uh, carcinogenesis, we must understand that from our previous video, we have uh, talked about external and internal stimuli. So what does it mean? My external means whatever outside the cell. Internal is actually intrinsic. It's inside the cell itself. Carcinogen is the agents that causes or induce cancer. All right, we can actually divide it into biological and non-biological agents. So biological agents, we have these uh, viruses. The most famous virus is human papilloma virus HPV. We also have bacteria. My favorite, H. pylori, that causes gastric cancer, right? And also protozoa, right? Protozoa like schistostomiasis, right? And ah, for the all the general surgeons here, hormones. The most famous hormones of all is estrogen. Non-biological carcinogen, WHO have only identified 23 of them and most of them are anitrosamide. Uh, so all those are chemicals. And last but not the least, the radiation. For intrinsic factors, the or internal stimuli, right? We only have two. The DNA damages another one is the gene itself and the dna itself we also contain cancer producing genes so we have this oncogenes oncogenes are those sequence in the dna where it will always remain dormant unless been activated so these are the oncogenes and we also have tumor suppressor gene Tumor suppressor genes are those genes that is always there to suppress the oncogenes. Alright. Hope you are not confused. This genetic DNA and carcinogen. Carcinogen are those not in the DNA itself. Whereas the oncogenes and tumor suppressor gene, they are in the gene itself, right? <laughs> Coming out from your parents, all right? And this is what we call a hereditary type of a cancer. So the most famous oncogene is this BRCA, right? There's a BRCA1, there's a BRCA2. So BRCA1 and BRCA2 causes breast cancer. The most famous tumor suppressor gene is P53 and this P53 gene is the one that suppresses one is get inactivated mm, all the cancer start to come up so those are just the causes of the carcinogenesis it will be more interesting if we do get the steps carcinogenesis right we make things simple it's only three the first step is the initiation the 
the second step is the promotion and the third step is the progression we go back to the cell cycle just now right once the dna damage the dna adapts is deficient and it becomes stable and went into m phase and it inherits into the cell lineage so imagine from the previous video the one cell that is deficient and it gets through all the repair mechanism and now it will go into promotion so from the single cell it will become a multiple cells and it further divide and this will cause a clonal expansion See, clonal expansion is very scary. It's a uh, geometric duplication. The one will become two, right? Two will become four. Four will become eight. And by no time, it will become millions. So when this occurs, it will go to the progression. And this progression will cause the metastasis. And this is what we are going to talk about in the later lectures. Then. So after we have talked so much, we will look at Anahan and Weinberg. They have proposed the hallmark of a cancer. So the first one is sustained cell proliferation. It does nothing but it's just reproduced in another word. And it has a resistance to cell apoptosis. Or we call it a broken cell death. The cell will become a immortal. Thirdly, the cell can stimulate and induce angiogenesis angio is blood vessel genesis is uh, produced right then number four the cell will have a replication immortality the cell will never die because it will just reproduce and reproduce and reproduce and number five it really have a activation of a mutation pathway it's actually talking about the dna yeah? number six it can avoid there's an avoidance right of suppression pathway this is what he's talking about the tumor suppressor gene and the uh, dna repair mechanism and number seven it can be programmed reprogramming of the energy metabolism from oxidation to glycolysis you see when the cell needs uh, energy most of the cell will uh, have to oxidize but the thing is, this cell have already gone autonomous. It can produce the energy just by glucose. And the last and not the least, it can evade the immune system and destruction. It can invade your the white blood cells and it won't be disrupted and this is the whole mass of a cancer for the think of it this is something like sun tzu right <laughs> okay this is out of war so if you have this you are already cancerous it 
further concludes carcinogenesis. I hope I have made this very very dry topic to become um, seemingly quite interesting, right? And the most important point is you must understand the cell cycle because there's something happening in the cell cycle in which in any other pathway the cell become autonomous and the cell have lost its function how does it lose its function it couldn't differentiate but when it couldn't differentiate it will just reproduce and it just causes mitosis and mitosis and mitosis and that is the one that causes the cancer once it really uh, grow so much it need to invade right it's going to invade the uh, neighboring places right? and it could cause the metastasis some of the students ask me is it really important to learn carcinogenesis we are surgeons we actually don't really need to know why we have cancer because when there's a cancer i just take it out mm. I beg to differ because if you know the origin of the cancer, you will know why we do the things that we do. They will be in the latter lectures and will tell you why we use uh, chemotherapy and what are the strategies to treat the cancers. Thank you for turning in to us this week. I hope you have learned something. If you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to put in the comment below. And also, you can always review back the previous videos. And lastly, as I always say, please like and subscribe and hit the notification button. So next week, we are going to discuss further on cancer series at the same time, same day and same channel. This is K-Search. Bye.